What's going on everyone? I am the OP Jellicent and we are team building for our week 5 match in the GBA D League. Up against the Detroit Butterfreeze coached by Anthony Zazo, Iron Flash Gaming. Definitely a very solid opponent, a very good pal too. We like talking a lot of crap to each other and just memeing on Discord, so definitely looking forward to battling him. He's uh, definitely a very good battler. He, I believe he made finals in NPL Season 5 or 6 and lost to Gypsy. I don't remember uh, which one, but definitely looking forward to this game right now. And I will say we're 0-4 right now, and I'm going to be live commentating the rest of the season because since we're this far in the back, there's really no point in sacrificing any entertainment value. I'm still going to be trying, don't get me wrong, but definitely feel as though just live commenting the rest of the season, taking it a little bit more lightly, could definitely just make it a little bit more enjoyable right now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say. Let's go ahead and get into this. So you can see my six Pokemon at the top of your screen that I am bringing. You can see his 11 Pokemon over on the right. And let's go ahead and go through his roster. All right, first Pokemon he has right here is the Garchomp. Definitely a very big problem. Can pretty much serve as a really nice revenge killer to a lot of the Pokemon on my team. Unfortunately, Manaphy just runs short of that thing's speed tier, so he can definitely run like a Dragonium ZZ Outrage and try to break through my Manaphy with that. So yeah, Tail Glow Up, I get one kill, and he just goes Garchomp and Revenge kills me, so definitely a good option there. I don't think he'll go Scarfed Garchomp, because Scarf Latias is definitely a very possible Scarfer for me. It's just because it can also outspeed his Scarf Heracross and Scarf Crocodile if he opts to go with those, so... Latias can easily Revenge Kill Garchomp with a Dragon-type move or Ice Beam, so... I'm definitely expecting the Z Garchomp, could be Ground DMZ too. That can definitely help threaten my Registeel a lot more, as well as my Zerka Tree. If I am running a Shooka Berry, which I must guess I might as well say I am, so... Dragonium Z Garchomp or Groundium Z Garchomp, definitely very high potential right there. Next up he has the Ferrothorn, which I think Ferrothorn has a mixed matchup right here. It can definitely switch into a lot of my Pokemon, such as my Manaphy if it is Oka Berry, but I can definitely just slap fire type moves on a lot of my Pokemon and 2-hit KO it, and it automatically gets 2-hit KO'd by Mega Pinster too, which is definitely very great. So I'm not sure whether Ferrothorn is going to come, I really don't see it coming, just because he has other, he has other options for hazards too. He has Stealth Rocks on Blissey. And I really don't think he's going to try to hazard stack me with spikes or anything like that. So I don't see Ferrothorn coming, but he could have. His, it doesn't definitely has a Tanish this matchup. Next up, he has the Zapdos, which I think a fast Zapdos actually makes a lot of sense, like max speed. It can speed tie with my Manaphy, and it definitely still has a reasonable bulk to try to take a hit for Mega Pinsir. I will say that Return into Stone Edge does actually kill most Zapdoses. He will have to be max HP, max defense, and I'm actually kind of hoping he does bring that set, because that'll definitely open the door for some of my other Pokemon. So. Same kind of thing with Zapdos right there, just Defogger. Bulky Pokemon, pretty much his most reliable Mega Pinsir switch in, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is with that. Next up, he has the Slowbro, which Slowbro uh, kind of has a bad matchup. It definitely is 1v1 by Calm Mind a lot, yes, but obviously I'm not bringing Calm Mind. Destroy Scarf is definitely the way to go right here, and uh, it can definitely get pressured by my man if he's plus 3 Energy Ball too, which is definitely very great, and... It's also pressured by Zerka Tree, and really just doesn't, doesn't appreciate being toxic by anything. So I don't see Slowbro. I definitely see him going a more offensive route with this team, just because I have I can apply so much pressure to his team that I really don't think he'll go with any sort of bulky build. But next up, he has the Talonflame. It pretty much outspeeds everything on my team, except for, I believe, Crobat and Aselgore, both of which don't really do too much damage to a defensive set. So I could see him bringing like a fast, bulky variant with like Roost and Swords Dance. And maybe just like Mono Brave Bird or Brave Bird Flirlets. Definitely a very possible bring right there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only set that I really see viable. It is another Defogger, and it's a faster one too. So definitely a good option there. But if he does bring it, I'm just definitely expecting that fast Swords Dance variant. Next up, he has the uh, Heracross, which Scarf Heracross has a pretty nice matchup right here. Scarf Close Combat can actually do something after he weakens my Crobat and Registeel. But it's pretty hard stopped by Crobat. He would have to predict me and go for like Stone Edge, which... I know Heracross gets Stone Edge, I think, so you would have to make that prediction, and other than that, Scarf definitely could make sense, but Quick Attack Mega Pinsir is also threatening that pretty well, and it's very weak to my Scarf Latias, too, so even if it gets a kill, I can Revenge Kill it with that, so I don't see hit Scarf Heracross coming, could be like Sub SD, or like SD, what's the ability called, SD Guts with Flame Orb, but same kind of thing there, it's not outspeeding what it needs to, so I don't see Heracross. Crocodile, I feel like it's a very likely Scarfer right here, just because, well, same kind of thing, you can't revenge kill my Latias. It definitely is, it has the best coverage for everything else. Dark pretty much just tears through the rest of my team. The only other resist that I have is Florgis, and he can definitely try to lure Florgis with something else. Something like Poison Z Garchomp could definitely make a lot of sense, and Florgis is honestly not that hard to wear down for his team. You just have to get like a Toxic off on it, 
or alerts with something, and Ferrothorn kind of deals with that too. So you could definitely do something like Scarf Cook, Kirk plus Ferrothorn, or Scarf Kirk plus like Dr uh, Poison EMZ Guard Chomp with the Poison Jab. Could definitely see that, but uh, other than that, Latias kind of deals with that pretty well too. He has the Blissey, which is a really annoying Pokemon. You'll actually see I have a strategy to deal with Blissey this week. Like, specifically Blissey, just because it can definitely stop some of the wind conditions on my team. It's blown back my Mega Pinsir, but it actually takes on Manaphy pretty well, even after some Tail Glows. And Hardwall's my Latias, Hardwall's some other stuff, so definitely a very annoying Pokemon, but it's pretty one-dimensional. We know exactly what it's going to try to do. It also gets access to Stealth Rox, as I said earlier, and... Next up, he has the Toxicroak, which he picked up a week before battling me, so I think he might have drafted it just specifically for my Manaphy. Now, Manaphy does get access to Psychic, so that's definitely something he'll have to keep in mind when building with that. And uh, yeah, if, uh, other than that, I really don't see like a Swords Dance Sucker Punch variant coming, because it is outsped by a lot of stuff, and he would have to rely on that priority. And I could have some setup mons, or maybe like Substitute or something. So if, if it comes, I'm assuming it'll just be like a bulky variant, maybe even a Salt Vest to help out with Manaphy. But man, if he does obviously get access to Psychic. Next up, he has the Go-Goat. He's been memeing about Go-Goat coming, but I really don't think Go-Goat comes right here. It's blown black by my Mega Pinsir. Man, if he gets Ice Beam, Latias gets coverage for it too. Pyro blows it back. I don't see Go-Goat, and I really don't think there's much else to say about that. And then finally, Mega Deontay, which definitely has a good speed tier against my team. Speed ties with my Latias, and it's outsped by stuff like Crobat and a Silgur, but I would have to run like Steel Wing Crobat, and I really don't want to go that route. So Mega Deontay definitely has its niche right here. I think it has to come, because if I bring Registeel, it pretty much gives Zapdos free defogs, so I really think Mega Deontay has a really nice option, but yeah, that's his roster, and let's go ahead and get into the six Pokemon that I am bringing. Alright, first Pokemon we have right here is our Selgor, which is running a Sash and Burden lead set. Pretty standard right here, Hidden Power Steel, which is for Mega Deontay, obviously. That can kill, uh, it does twit KO that thing, and he's not required to Mega Evolve, so that's why we're running Hidden Power Steel over something like Energy Ball. Water Shuriken is on there just for something like Talon, or something like Crocodile of Scarf Kirk, or SD Talon do get kind of out of hand, and we still have a Selgor around, that water type priority can definitely be very crucial, but I really don't plan on a Selgor being around after like turn 3 or 4, and uh, other than that we have Spikes and Encore, pretty standard set right here, Encore in case he tries to substitute on me with anything, or tries to set up, and uh, Spex is obviously our hazard lead right here, so you can see that we're pretty much bringing Hyper Offense with the rest of this team build right here, and Asselgor is definitely a very big part of that. I'm hoping we at least get up two spikes, but if he leads off with something and just starts spamming attacks, and it is faster than me, we might only be able to get one spike up, which would definitely be very unfortunate. We can guarantee one spike though, because the best he can do is try to lead off with Zapdos and try to like T-Bolt to discharge me, and we can Encore him into that attack to make sure that we keep our one spike up, and then we can maybe go out into something like Zerkatria or Latias after, so that's definitely looking very solid right here, and let's go ahead and move on to our Mega Pinsir. Alright, next Pokemon that we have right here is our Mega Pinsir. Enough speed to outspeed Garchomp no matter what right here, and it's a pretty standard set. You actually see that we're bringing Stealth Rocks Mega Pinsir, and the reason for that is, say Zapdos comes in on this thing and I like miss Stone Edge or somehow I'm not able to kill it, we can spam Stealth Rocks and guarantee th those to be up by the time that exchange is over, and Hazards are definitely a very key factor in the rest of our team being successful right here, and I really didn't see that much use in Swords Dance right here. He has so many faster potential threats such as the Talon Flame and the Mega Deontay, which I'm not even doing that much to with Quick Attack, so I definitely felt as though Stealth Rocks could actually be a really niche option right here. I don't see myself clicking it unless we do get into that situation with Zapdos, but other than that, pretty standard coverage, unless he's max HP, max defense Zapdos, return into Stone Edge always kills that thing, so that's definitely very nice, and Quick Attack is just a general priority there, can chip down the Heracross, Great for revenge killing stuff like Scarf Crocodile if we did get a hit off on it, and also great for Toxic Croak, because if we can get this thing in on Toxic Croak, and he'll be forced out, and if he stays in a Toxic Croak, man, if he is just going to have a ton of fun, which is definitely very really great. So hopefully Mega Pinsir can do quite a bit of stuff this week. Let's go ahead and move on to our Manaphy. Next Pokemon we have right here is our Manaphy, which is running a Leftovers Tail Glow 3 attack set. I really thought Sweeper Manaphy could definitely have a ton of potential. It has a ton of natural bulk anyway, so it can live one of anything from Garchomp, even one Dragonium Z if we are somehow at full health, but other than that, pretty standard set right here, Tail Glow, Surf, Energy Ball, and Hidden Power, Fire. Energy Ball does knock out Guard Jump after the Tail Glow. Surf, just, just general staff throughout his entire team, does to hit KO Blissey after a Tail Glow. 
unless it is some weird set, and then Hidden Power Fire is specifically there for Dry Skin Toxic Oak. Unless it's some weird Assault Vest set, if we are Hidden Power Fire, after the spike we will guarantee Oko Dry Skin Toxic Oak, which is definitely going to be very crucial because if we can get rid of Dry Skin Toxic Oak with this Pokemon and we're still at a decent amount of health, we can definitely put in some work with it. Maybe even get another kill. And obviously, Hidden Power Fire hits the Fair Thorn very well, too. We do also take a natural hit from Mega Deontay, and we guaranteed outspeed the Go Goat. I'm really not expecting Go Goat to come, and if it is, if, if you have to run like Scarf Go Goat just to deal with this thing, and I really don't think that's a very smart option, so I don't see Go Goat coming, but hopefully, man, if he can. I'd either wall break mid game or clean late game if we have some hazards up and a lot of his team is chipped down and we're still at a good amount of health. So that's kind of the idea right here. Let's go ahead and move on to our Latias. Next up here we have Latias, which is running a Choice Scarf set and pretty basic coverage right here Sash Shock, Ice Beam, Draco Meteor, and Healing Wish. I really like Healing Wish because it allows me to play more recklessly with some of my other win conditions. I did say I want to run Sweeper Manaphy, but if I get the opportunity to send in Manaphy early, and potentially throw off an attack, I could potentially healing with that thing back up later, and even pull off the sweep at late game, if I do feel that that's a good way to win this game, but uh, other than that, we have Draco Meteor and Ice Beam, pretty great revenge killers for stuff like Garchomp, and Sock Shock can revenge kill Heracross, and I really think it'll either be Scarf Chomp or Scarf Crocodile, and I don't think Heracross will come, so we can revenge kill all of those with this. If it starts to get Moxie boosts and that does get out of hand, this is definitely a very great option for that. So, really like Choice Scarf Latias this week. Not really, not much else to say about this. It does to it here defensive Zapdos with Ice Beam, and it doesn't have to risk speed ties with Mega Deontay, which is definitely very great. So, pretty much that's our Latias right here, and let's go ahead and move on to our Crobat. Alright, our next Pokemon right here is our Crobat, which is running a pretty standard stall breaking set right here with Taunt, Toxic Roost, and Air Slash. Can 1v1 a lot of Pokemon that my late game cleaners definitely struggle with, such as my Manaphy and my Latias? They definitely don't appreciate like Slowbro and Blissey, and this thing can definitely 1v1 both of those, even Slowbro. We take 50% from Psychic, we Toxic it, and then we just roost all it until that thing faints, which is definitely very great. Same thing with Blissey, and we even have Taunt to prevent them from like statusing us, which is definitely very cool as well. Taunt just can also be really cruel against Zapdos. I definitely think he might use this as a defog fodder, just because we don't really he doesn't really take a ton of damage. The worst I can do is Toxic him, but I really want to try to keep my hazards up this game, so Taunt is definitely a great option for that. And if I do have to trade Crobat just to keep hazards up, I'm actually going to consider doing that, just based on how the game is going. If I do feel as though Zapdos, I mean Crobat here is still necessary, I might switch it out and forego the hazards, but we shall see what that. Other than that, Infiltrator is definitely very cool too. Can definitely get rid of stuff like Sub Heracross, and I really don't think Heracross is coming, but I can break through that. And really, I need other substitutes he wants to put up. If he runs like a bulky substitute Pokemon on Slowbro or Blissey, we can go ahead and Toxic that too and basically wear that thing down. That's definitely looking pretty good for us. So really excited to see if Crobat can stall a break right here and let's go ahead and move on to our final Pokemon. Final Pokemon right here is DS Gaming our Zergatry, which is running a Shookaberry set. So lure for Garchomp, after we Tail Glow we definitely take an Earthquake. The one thing that could go bad is if he Groundium Zs me or Dragonium Zs. He will knock me out through the Shuka Berry, which is definitely very scary, but another scenario that I definitely envision with this Pokemon is, so he leads off with Zapdos and tries to defog my s spikes away. What I can do is lead a Selgor, get up a spike, Encore him into that electric type move as he knocks me out, then I can go out into this, Tail Glow up as he brings out Blissey and 2 hit KO that with the spikes damage, which is definitely very cool, and uh, that's actually looking very great because Blissey is definitely a big problem to our... Manaphy as well as our Latias, so that's definitely a scenario that I envision going down. I actually think it's very likely, just because, I mean, what else, what other response does he really have to this? He could go out into an offensive Pokemon. I wouldn't agree as to switching out hard into something really offensive, like Garchomp or Scarf Crocodile on this thing, and it's also a pretty cool Crocodile lead, I forgot to mention that. We do definitely take a plus one Earthquake with ease, and we can go ahead and knock that out with Energy Ball. So really excited for DS Gaming to potentially alert something, and ideally get rid of that Blissey right here. But yeah, that is going to be the team. Let me know what you guys think about it down below in the comments. Would you change anything, and do you think we are going to win this game? Picking up our first one would definitely be very cool, but yeah. If you are new, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And yeah, I am live commentating, so I hope you're looking forward to that too, and I'll see you tomorrow for the match. Later.